We also want to talk a bit about the Staple Singers uh, because, like Dorsey, they brought a goodly infusion of blues into their brand of gospel music, and it was much more folky than churchy, if we can say that. They actually are fam were a family group of singers from Chicago, and they began their recording careers on area labels, uh, United and then VJ, which was a major record roll label. And then finally, they also recorded for a folk label, Riverside, and then later Stax Records, which was a major soul label out of Memphis. Um, their biggest selling hits were the more traditional little book gospel songs like Uncloudy Day and Will the Circle Be Unbroken. But um, and then they had later secular hits like uh, Respect Yourself. They sang at Watt Stacks, for example, which was a big concert at the height of the Black Power movement in the 70s. And uh, then they came back to Chicago. Mavis Staples, who's the, the, <laughs> the bass singer in the group, actually, um, had a solo career, and Robux Staples, who was also called Pops, uh, was the guitarist, and he had learned to play the guitar in Mississippi and sounds basically like a Mississippi blues guitar player, although he never, he refused to sing blues, of course. Again, there's the tension between God and the devil. Um, Pop Staples died in 2000. The song that we chose for uh, WFMT, and I admit this is just because I love it so much, is a song called I'm Coming Home, which combines very simple Mississippi blues guitar, slightly dirty, slightly out of town, the way that, uh, out of tune, the way that the, the musicians like it, and the traditional slightly modal harmonies that the Staples are famous for, kind of biting harmonies, and Mavis's incredible lead singing that descends to incredibly low notes uh, with with a wonderful swoop, and again, it, it just induces goosebumps. <laughs> oh, and here we have an early photo. This is from the Theodore Charles Stone collection here at the center. Stone was a local journalist and musician. Actually, he was a, a music journalist, so he has some non-classical photos in his collection. This must be well, they're still wearing choir robes, so this must be fairly early in their career. I'd say before 1960. And of course, there's Pop Roebuck. And that's Purvis and then Mavis and Cleotha.